So in this tutorial, let's go over how to change a variable. So you set a variable to one value at the beginning um, or at a certain point in the text, and then at a different point after that, um, let's go over how to change that variable. Um, so changing variables over time, and then also we're gonna go over if statements or conditionals. So basically, so the logic of this is if I, at the very beginning of my story, I haven't had coffee. So I say, have I had coffee today? And then the answer is no, I have not. Um, so then, um, I'm using the, the Dolly Parton line just to be a little bit silly with this. I stumbled out of bed uh, and stumbled to the kitchen to pour myself a cup of ambition. So Dolly has coffee, so we're going to set the variable I had coffee to yes. And then we'll ask again, have I had coffee today? And the answer is yes. So if we play this, remember all of the stuff in the parentheses is going to be invisible. We're not going to have it. We're just going to see, have I had coffee today? No. I stumbled out of bed and stumbled to the kitchen to pour myself a cup of ambition, which I don't think is exactly the right lyric, but it, it's early and I've forgotten it. So we see that text, we don't see this text, and then we see, have I had coffee today? Yes. So that's what we should see when we play this. Have I had coffee today? No. And then the Dolly Parton line, have I had, had coffee today? Yes. So this just goes to show that you can change variables during a story. So we set it to one thing, and then later in the story, we set it to another thing. So let's move on to a slightly more complicated example. Um, so don't freak out. This looks like a lot, but I promise if you've understood the first two sections of this video, this is not that much more complicated. It just looks a little bit scarier, but I'll show you most of this text is actually invisible when we play this. It really ends up being quite simple, um, but let me break this down line, line by line just to show you what it is. So at the very beginning, we set a variable, which I've named ver, to 10. And I have the line, I'm thinking of a number. So all we're going to see is I'm thinking of a number. Our number is 10. So I have statements here that are going to determine what text I see based on what this variable is set to. So if variable is set to 10, which it is, we'll see the text, the number is 10. But if this variable was greater than 10, then we would say um, the number is greater than 10. And if the variable is less than 10, um, then we would say the number is less than 10. So this is what is called an if statement. Basically, what this is, is it means if a certain condition has been met, then this will happen. So we have said if the variable is 10, is greater than 10, is less than 10, whatever this variable is set to, um, that's going to determine which text we show. So if we play this, just focusing on the first two lines, we're going to see I'm thinking of a number, the number is 10, because that's what we've set a variable to. And when we play it, that's true. I'm thinking of a number, the number is 10. But then I change the variable. So I set um, this variable to variable plus 10. And what that means, basically, as I'm saying, hey, I have this variable. It already exists. I want this variable to increase by 10. So I want to set it to itself, but I want it to increase by 10. Or maybe I want to decrease it by 10. So, so this is all, basically all this is saying is I want this variable to be itself, uh, in this case, minus 10, but we were doing plus 10. What I could also do is literally just, instead of doing this, I just want to set my variable to 20. And that's exactly the same thing. Setting variable to variable plus 10 and setting variable to 20, exactly the same thing because variable we defined at the beginning was 10. So 10 plus 10 is 20. So you could phrase it this way, you could phrase it this way, it does not matter at all. So then um, now that this number is 20, as we've, we've said, it's 20. Um, we're going to say, if this variable is 10, the number is 10. It, it is no longer that. Um, here, let's just show you, just for simplicity's sake. I'll, I'll go back and change this in a second. So th this is the same exact format as up here. Um, well, this can be else. But so, so it's the same thing up here. So. If this variable is 10, we say the number is 10. If the variable is greater than 10, um, then we say that. 
And then here's what's called an else statement. So we've set two conditions. <clears throat> so if, if the number is 10, we say this. If the number is greater than 10, we say that. If anything else happens at all, like if, if variable for some reason was purple, or if it was elephant, um, or if it was true, or if it's less than 10, which is really the only other option in this case, um, then that's what we would say. Um, so I've set two conditions, and I have specific reactions I want to those conditions. If anything else happens at all, I want to say this. Um, so you could change the variable to anything, and if it's not one of these two things, then this will happen. Um, and this is, so these, these three ways of writing it, if, 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 else, if, else, if, else, these all are exactly the same. They all mean exactly the same thing. Um, so if you just want to keep doing if statements the whole time, if that's easiest for you, and define every possible condition, great, go for it. Um, no problem at all there. Um, you could say, you could define two conditions or three conditions and then have a safeguard for if anything else happens, do this. Or um, just another way to format it is by saying, if this happens, do this. And then else if is basically just another way of saying, here's another condition. So it basically means the same thing as if. Um, people with more programming knowledge, I'm sure there's more nuance to this, but for the purposes of newcomers to Twine, really all you need to know is else if is the same as if. But if you see this, now you know what it is. And then there's else. Um, so, so in every case, it's the exact same format. There are three conditions that we're setting with three reactions, three conditions we're setting, three reactions, three conditions, three reactions. So all of these are exactly the same. They're just different ways to write the same thing. So let, let's go through this again slowly. So here, we have set our variable to 10. I'm thinking of a number. If the variable is 10, which it is in this case, then, then we'll say the number is 10. And notice how I've put all the reactions that I want in between these brackets. So if I were to take away a bracket, then it doesn't work. See how it like unhighlighted there? And it's gonna re-highlight once I type the bracket correctly. Um, yeah, so if, if you don't have like this, for example, see, it, it just messes everything up. So you, you'd need to make sure that you're formatting this stuff properly um, or it doesn't work. See, and, and the color changes to help you along. Um, and then if you play your twine game or you're, you're like um, testing it out, it'll tell you if you've um, written something incorrectly or made a mistake, it'll, it'll let you know. Um, but just be, be sure to pay attention to the formatting. Um, okay, so the, the variable is 10. Um, if the variable is 10, we say this. And then we've changed it to the variable, which was 10 plus 10, so now it's 20. Um, if the variable is greater than 10, which it is, it's 20, then the number is greater than 10. And then here, our variable was 20, we subtract 19, our variable is now 1. Um, so if our variable is 10, it's not. If our variable is greater than 10, it's not. Um, anything else, so this is our condition because our variable is 1, so it's, it's not either of the, these two, it's this one. Then we say the number is less than 10. So when we play this, we should see, I'm thinking of a number, the number is 10. I'm thinking of another number, the number is greater than 10. I'm thinking of another number, the number is less than 10. So let's play that. Thinking of a number, the number is 10. I'm thinking of another number, the number is greater than 10. I'm thinking of another number, the number is less than 10. Okay, so that was a lot to do something very simple. And, and this code really is just kind of repeating itself. Um, but just to show you again, these different options of formatting it. Okay, so finally, let's show you how to put this all together in a story format. So basically, this section of my story is like an actual like little story. So let, let's just play it um, and, and show you what we've got going on. So let's get started. In this tale, there was a war between the passages. They all vied for the player's attention, and each one wanted the most clicks. Which passage will you choose? I'll choose passage two. Um, I want to click on this bit of text to take me to passage B. Okay, this is passage B. You've been here one time. So let's do passage three this time. I want to go to passage B. Oh, this number, this has changed. So I probably have set a variable here and I've probably set some conditions um, to make this change. So let, let's try one more time. Let's go back to passage three, go back to passage B. Ah, it's changed again. 
Okay, so what's going on here? Let's look at the code. So the first thing, so this is what we played. This is what we clicked into play. So I have set a variable here. I've called it visits to B. So I'm trying to track the number of times we visited passage B. So at the beginning of our story, we want it to be zero. <clears throat> so at the start of our story, we have this text. Um, and then basically, no matter, I mean, this is a dead end, but um, if you click these two passages, eventually you have the option to go to passage B. And then once you get to passage B, we want to track the amount of times you've been here. So basically, so we've already defined at the beginning of our story, this variable visits to B, and all we want to do is add one to that. So this is why that, that weird way of, of naming variables I showed you at the beginning. So like when we were, we had our variable 10 and we wanted to change it to 20. In this case, this is why you would want to say um, variable equals variable plus one or plus two or whatever it is, instead of totally redefining the variable. Because if you're trying to track like incrementally, um, you can't every time say set this variable to two, set this variable to three, because it just doesn't work. So you have to say, if you're just increasing by a set amount every time, you have to say set this variable to itself plus one. So that's what I've done here. So then I've said, if this variable is one, I'll say you have been here and then the, what the variable is, its value. So that would be one time. Because in English, obviously, if you're saying I've been here one time, time is singular. I, if I've been here two times, three times, uh, then it's plural. So that's why I wanted these um, statements here. So if the variable is one, I want time to be singular. If it's anything else, um, so it would always end up being greater than one. So if it's just not one, um, then I want times to be plural. So that, that's what I've done. So let's show you one more time how that works. So we set the variable here and then we're updating the variable in this passage. So if I play, I say, let's get started. I go to passage three, I go to passage B, been here one time. Go to passage three, go to passage B. I've been here two times. And this is just gonna keep increasing um, just into infinity basically, because every time I, I go here, the variable that is tracking how many times I've visited this page just increases by one. So this is always gonna continue increasing.